In this session, we discuss populating your WordPress sidebars. And to do that, we go down to Appearance, Widgets. And once we're at this screen, we'll see the available sidebars that are determined by our theme. And then we'll see a number of widgets over here. The idea is that we're going to pull these widgets onto our sidebar. Now remember we discussed in a previous session how your theme will determine which sidebars or how many sidebars and the positions of sidebars or widget areas as they're also called for your for your site. So if we actually look at our site here, which we don't have, we haven't pulled any widgets over onto the sidebars yet. This is the default WordPress theme and it has two widget areas, one here and one here. And then it also has three widget areas and the footer area. Now you notice there aren't any widgets showing up here. And there are a couple of default widgets over here. This is typical of themes. Sometimes they'll have default widgets already in place in their sidebars. And other times the sidebars won't show up at all until you actually place widgets onto them. So let's go ahead and drag some widgets over onto our widget areas to see what I mean by that. Now each of these widgets has its own individual functionality. For instance, the archives widget will show a monthly archive of the posts on your site. Categories are going to show a list of categories that you have placed blog posts into so that when people click on that category or on an individual category, it will see all the blog posts that have been tagged with that category. Custom menu, we know about those from a previous session. Links will show a number of links that you've added to your blog roll or into other link categories. And then there's a whole bunch of other widgets here. This one will show your recent comments. This one will show your recent posts. I'm going to drag this up so to place a widget onto your sidebar you're going to grab a hold of it with your mouse pull it up and place it into the widget area that you want it to show up in. Now different widgets are going to have different settings. So for this we can give it a different title. It doesn't have to say recent posts. We could say blog posts if we wanted. And it will show how many posts. And we can change that if we like and then we would just click Save. So now let's pull a widget into our secondary widget area. Let's pull a links widget into there. Now this is going to look a little bit different because we can actually show all links or we can show links from just particular categories, link categories that we've created. We can also sort them differently by rating or just randomly sorting them or alphabetically by title. And then we have some other features here. We can show the full length description. So when you create links, you can give them link names and descriptions. And you can decide which of these elements you want to actually show on the sidebar. And then also it will allow you to put in how many links you want to show. Now there are some default links already in WordPress.com. So those are the ones that are going to show up. And so we want to click on Save. And then we'll go over and take a look at the, the site. Okay, so here we have our most recent blog posts and links to them. And then here are the links that were saved within the blog roll category as a default in WordPress.com. Okay, now let's go ahead and put some things in our footer areas. I want to show you some widgets that have a little bit more functionality than those. Specifically, some of the widgets that are available on WordPress.com come automatically as standard widgets in WordPress.com and one of those is a Twitter widget which will actually show your latest Twitter posts. So we can drop that in there. We can give it a title. We can place our Twitter username in here. Again, we can show the maximum number of tweets that we want to show. 
We can hide replies, which is actually, if you get a lot of conversations going on, tw on your tweets, is a good idea because that can take up a lot of room. And then you can place some text that actually shows up between the tweet and the actual time stamp. And so, like I said, each widget is going to have its own individual set of features. So I also want to show you the Flickr widget that comes standard at WordPress.com as well. Now for this you want to actually grab up your Flickr RSS feed. To find the RSS feed for your Flickr account, go to your photo stream or the home page of your Flickr account, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see something that says you'll have the RSS icon and it'll say subscribe to your photo stream. So you can click on this link here and copy that link and that is the link that we're then going to place in our Flickr widget to this area right here and we'll say how many photos we want to show and also what size we want them to show. Now notice that when I save this widget and we actually go back and view the site we see the latest images from my Flickr account because that is the RSS feed that we grabbed. But what I wanted to point out is that you notice that I grabbed this widget from this area down here which is called the inactives widget area. Now what that means is that if you don't want a widget, you decide you don't want it after all on your footer, but you might want to use it later on in a different sidebar then you can just drag it down to that inactive area and it will save the settings. That's why it already have the settings for my Flickr account in there. So we could also populate the third footer area and the fourth footer area as well and those will then show up in our site. Now what I suggest is to get familiar with all of the available widgets in WordPress is to drag them over onto your sidebars, check out the settings, and just view your site with the widgets in place. You're not going to hurt anything and you can just pull them off if you don't want them. Now the last thing I want to show you on WordPress.com are text widgets. Now a text widget is a way for you to create your own widgets. What you need to do is grab the text widget, pull it up on your sidebar like you would any widget, and then what you'll see when this is pulled open is that it's a blank widget. What that means is that we can put in whatever we want. Now, I'm also going to show you WordPress.org and how you can create more sophisticated custom widgets. But in WordPress.com, you're limited to HTML you don't want you can't put any JavaScript in here you can't put a uh, script that that require a little bit more functionality for security reasons so to create this text widget I'm going to create a Facebook badge and I go to facebook.com slash badges and I'm going to grab the link to my profile badge now I'm going to run through these in more detail in a later session the session after this one when I actually talk about creating custom widgets for WordPress but for now I want to show you just kind of basically how this works. I copied that link and I'm going to paste it in here. Now this really is just a link to that Facebook image and when somebody clicks on that image it's going to take them back to my Facebook page. So when I save this and I go back to view my blog I'm going to see down here in the footer, I'm going to see this nice little badge that I can then click on and it will take me to my Facebook page. Now this is called a Facebook badge because all it really is, like I said, is a link in an image. There are a lot of other widgets, nice widgets that have more functionality like like, like buttons and Facebook page widgets that will 
kind of investigate later on. But that's about as basic a uh, text widget as you can use in WordPress.com. Okay, now if we move on over to WordPress.org or a self-hosted WordPress site, we have a little bit more functionality when it comes to the text widgets. So again, we go to our site, we go down to Appearance, Widgets, and now when we create a text widget, again, we're going to go down and find the widget that says text, pull it up here and drop it onto our sidebar, one of our primary widget areas or sidebars. And I'm going to show you one that has a little bit more functionality, one you would not be able to use in WordPress.com. Now notice that WordPress.com had its own Twitter widget, but I want to use one that has a little more functionality, so I'm going to Twitter.com goodies. Again, I'm going to talk about creating these in more detail a little bit later. Right now I just wanted to show you basically how it's done. We would click on whatever type of widget we want. In this case I want my profile widget. And I can do a lot of different things with this. I can um, change the colors, I can change the size, and so forth. But for now, I just want to go ahead and grab up that code and place it in here and save. And then view the site and view the, the Twitter widget in the sidebar of this site. And so this, again, we would, we would do things like adjust the, the width and like I said, we'll, we'll discuss those things in, in a later session. But for now I wanted to show you that you can, you can put widgets and, and other items that have more functionality when you're using WordPress.org. And now finally, the other thing I want to talk about as far as WordPress.org is concerned is again in a later session we're going to talk about WordPress plugins. Now a lot of times when you install plugins, if there's an available widget that goes along with that plugin, it's automatically going to show up in your available widget se section. And so all of these are not necessarily standard widgets for this site because there are some plugins that have been installed. So that again, this is a plugin that's been installed. If I drag that over into my widget area, I see that by using this plugin, which has its own widget, I have a lot of functionality as far as how I can set my subscribe button using Add to Any. Um, again, we'll, we'll talk about these in more detail, but I also wanted to just point out that that's how you can get a lot of additional uh, more specialized widgets for your sidebar using WordPress.org. Okay, well that concludes this session.